Hi and welcome to Historical. I thought I'd do a little bit of an update on the Frogger project and the sound. In the last video, which I'll put a link up in the corner now, I did add some sounds for the hop sound and for the two death sounds. And that was all great. I think I mentioned in the video that they were WAV files which take up a lot of memory. So for example, I'm pretty sure that the hop sound was around between 4 and 11k, I forget which one it was, either 4k or 11k. In either case, for an embedded system, it's quite a lot of memory. And we really want to cut that down to almost nothing. And what you can do with the DAC Audio software is have musical instruments and you can define your own musical instrument and define the shape of the waveforms with the envelope class. And the idea of that is it's basically going to be, and as I've mentioned in other videos for the DAC Audio, a synthesizer. So you can synthesize almost any sound to within a degree of to within some degree of accuracy. I'll put a link up in the corner now as well for the one of the DAC Audio videos if you've not seen it, have a look at that. But if you come to my you can see I've got the oscilloscope set up here. We've got the Frogger uh, hardware here. It's not playing Frogger at the moment because I'm just working on the sounds. And if we go to my computer, which is just kind of here, but we'll switch on the screen now. There we go. So you can see I've got some quite simple software. This is synthesizing the hop sound. And um, we'll play the hop sound in a minute, but this will synthesize the hop sound. And if you look here, it defines just one instrument class there, which I've called jump sound. So I've got an instrument called the jump sound. And then in the code, uh, that's a bit the serial. I'm using the serial just for some debugging purposes. Um, because you can see, you'll find out in a minute I'm having some problems. So, we'll, and then we go to define the jump sound, and then we'll play the jump sound. So, when it boots up, it'll play the jump sound. And also, during the loop, where is the main loop down here? It just goes round and round, waiting for me to press a button. Let's flip back to the scope. So, I'm just waiting for me to press a, a button on the control here to play the sound again whenever I want to, just for ease. So you can see this is not, switching back again to the computer, this is not playing the Frogger game, I'm just trying to get the sound right. So in the Define Jump Sound, I just create a couple of um, envelopes, an envelope for the start of the sound, an envelope for the end. And with the instrument, you can attach as many envelopes as you want to an instrument, and it will play one after the other, in the order that you add them. So, in this first part, I define the envelope. I add an envelope to the jump sound and it returns it there, jump envelope start and this is my definition to create the hop sound. I'm not going to go into the details here, that's for another video to do with DAC audio, but that will define an envelope that I thought was fairly similar to the frog sound, hop sound. So we'll have a look at the hop sound which I've got in Audacity here and if I play it, um, there we go. And if you remember back to the video, if you've watched it earlier or you watched it before when I, when I first put it out a couple of weeks back or so, the Frogger hardware played that fairly accurately. I mean, it was a WAV file, so you'd expect it to, but yeah, it sounded pretty much like this, even with the different speakers. I know I'm playing one on a computer here, and the other one's a different speaker and everything like that, but... It pretty much sounded exactly like right that, like like that, if I can speak properly. And what I've done with this software, you can have a look here and have a look at how this sound is formed. So let's just get the correct cursor. It starts off, and you can see it's a, a square wave. I'll zoom in as well as we point out different points, parts of the waveform. But every wave on there, going up and down, is a square wave and starts off at a high volume for. A, oops, where's the cursor come? Starts off at a high volume for a certain amount of time, then it drops to nearly half of that, but not quite, probably about 60% of the volume in that in that section there. And then in this section it drops again to probably about 40% of the original volume, and then it repeats and repeats and almost repeats. Then it just changes a little bit there, and the frequency changes a little bit. You can see the lines a little bit closer together in this section compared to that. And then also at this point onwards, sorry, at this point onwards, it starts to decay in volume, which I haven't defined yet. I did originally, but it, it wasn't quite right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play you the bit that I've 
I've got a simulator at the moment, which is those three there, and you can listen to that. So get that in your minds, and then I'm going to play the actual hardware. So I'm going to press the button now. I'm not going to switch screen, just leave it on the computer screen for a second. Although I'm not sure that's very audible. Let's just turn that up a little bit. Oops. Yeah, that's a bit better. You should be able to hear that. All right. And I catch some of the circuit. It just affects it a bit. So listen to that. That is the same three bars that I'm playing on there. Let's play that again on the computer. It should sound like this. But it sounds like this. And we know that the hardware can replicate that sound really well because we've had it in the previous video where it was doing it as a WAV file. So we know the hardware is perfectly capable of producing the exact waveform we need. Why is it when it is it not working with the simulation? So obviously what I, what I did then, I had a quick look at the waveform. If I keep it pressing, you can kind of see it there, that it looks, well, sorry, I haven't had a swap screen. Let me just swap screens back to the oscilloscope. And what I'll do, I'll bring in the Audacity waveform next to the oscilloscope. And there we go. So you should have the Audacity waveform and this one. And if you look, they are identical. I've got the timings pretty much spot on. I've checked the frequencies and the timings. The timings that these go on for is the same as the Audacity waveform. You can see there's roughly four there. Um, we'll just put it on, just one second, let's put it on for a, sort of a freeze frame, let's just do that, so we're not having to listen to that all the time. But yeah, I haven't got my pointer handy at the moment, but my finger will, will do. So we've got four peaks along there, we've got four peaks of the virtually to within, I don't know, probably thousands of a second, one or two thousands of a second, the same length of period for this square wave, and then we dropped to about 60%, and then to about 40% or so, and then we repeat three times and if we just zoom in on this uh, where are we so we just zoom in whoops wrong way and we'll just move it about to a start where are we now there are small differences let me just zoom back a little bit there are some small differences you can see the sine wave just picking up there where is the start of the wave let's move that like that And we'll have the start of the wave in a second. I can probably move this quicker if I press it. Yeah, that would have been a better idea. Right, okay. So there's the start of our wave. And I, want, I do want to zoom in a bit more. You can see, it's a reasonable square wave. I'm getting the transition there. So this is the start at more or less full amplitude, dropping to about 60% of amplitude. And as you saw, it did drop... The, for the correct amount of time to about 40% of the amplitude further along. And if I zoom in on the Audacity screen as well, as a zoom or anything, there we go. If you look, it's okay, I have definitely got four peaks going along there, like the Audacity screen has there. We'll show them all on. Got the same peaks, what you would think yeah, would, would be reasonably good, dropping to about 60%. And then this repeats in exactly the same way as the Audacity software does. So let's just go back to our cursor. So we've got the four peaks there. Then we get the rest of the peaks. And then it drops to those four at about 40% as well. And I have checked this and checked this. The timings are pretty much spot on. The amplitude difference is pretty much spot on. The only difference I can spot is... And if I zoom in too much on Audacity, it does like a, a weird sort of um, thing, I'll show you. Yeah, just like these sort of like peak dot things. Um, I'm not sure whether you can turn that on or off or not, but I find it quite annoying. So let's just zoom out one level from there. If you look, uh, and I'll just keep the actual magnifying glass on at the moment, at the top of the waves, I mean, we do have a slight angle to the wave. It's not an exact square wave. So is that causing the slight difference in sound? But the most noticeable thing I can spot at the moment is we have ripple along the top here. On the top of each wave, there is some ripple. Is that enough 
to cause the difference in sign we're hearing? Or is it this slightly angled square wave? It's hard to know. I don't know the Frogger hardware for sound that well. But I presume they use probably some sort of simple 555 timer or something like that to produce a square wave, which they then probably with another 55 timer altered it slightly in amplitude as it went along. I'm not really sure, but there's two things I need to do. I need to create an extra sort of filter to envelopes where I can actually add another sort of filter on top. The first thing I'm going to do is to add a ripple. Now that, looking at it, does it look random? It's like a peak there, peak there, it's not quite as pronounced there, it's fairly random, looks it, but I would have to look at just how often it's sort of changing, but I definitely need to try putting some sort of wibbly wobbly effect, some sort of a filter on the top there to create an extra ripple going on, because I, on the oscilloscope I definitely don't have enough ripple, it's a very very straight edge going along there with a very very straight down edge, so I'm going to try adding a ripple on first, and then I'm going to try, if that doesn't work, I will look at the slight angle of these square waves and I'll, I'll do a slight angle on them. Again, I can alter the waveform. <clears throat> I have, <clears throat> sorry again, I have a square waveform I can do, I have a sine wave I can do, I have a, two types of sawtooth um, waveforms I can do. I could do one that's a sort of slanted square wave without too much effort. Um, so... Yeah, I'm kind of just guessing a bit, but yeah, I'm going to put the ripple on first, and then if that doesn't work, we'll put that on. But I just thought I'd do an update video, because I know people want to see the updates, and I am working on it in the background. I work again, my normal real-life job is incredibly busy, um, but I still want to work on this. The other thing I noticed on mine, I do have a slight sort of blip up. I have made sure that my uh, probe leads are calibrated. So that there's no sort of capacity, you know, they're actually bang on and it should have a perfect square wave, it is. Now I've noticed, I'm not getting a perfect square wave on that. It has a bit of a kink there and a bit of a kink there, which is odd. And I'm guessing it's something to do with, something to do with the software, maybe. But again, I wouldn't expect that to cause such a dramatic difference in sound. But you can see there's definitely no ripple on this. So I'm going to put a ripple on first and then I'll look at slanting these edges and then I'll maybe look at this. But that's where we are at the moment. That's what I'll be working on. I anticipate that's probably going to take me um, a good week of coding. I'm going to see if I can put another video out in the meantime about something else or maybe more progress on this. But that's it for now. That's where I'm at. If you've got any comments you want to leave down below to try and help me work out, you know, what maybe the differences are here, why, why it's so different in sound, and it is quite different. If you're a sound engineer, maybe, leave a comment below. I'm certainly not a sound engineer. I haven't really got much of a clue about sound, only the basics of what you can see about waveforms and envelopes. But yeah, leave a comment below and like, and if you're not already a subscriber, we'd really appreciate that subscribe, and bye for now. Thanks for watching.